Now, let's look at a little example here. And the reason we went over these registers is to show you how they kind of mix and play together and how they work in harmonies and creating melodies. Right now, we're just going to look at some longer notes here in this little example. So not a terrible sound. This is this is all pretty tight harmonic writing here. We can look at the MIDI part. So we're dealing with first flute, oboe, first oboe, first clarinet, and first bassoon. And you can see that this is just kind of four part. This doesn't have a lot of power uh, right here. Even if we double it, see this very next example here, this whole thing is, uh, I've doubled all the parts. So now we have two flutes, two oboes, two clarinets, and two bassoons. And it's a little bit louder, but let's listen to this very next example. Everything sounds a good bit tighter, and it just sounds a little bit more homogenous, if you will. So let's listen to this second example again. And then the third example. The main difference here is that things sit a little bit nicer in terms of the registers in this third example. It's higher. If we look what's going on here in the first example, this is flute one here, you can see that the range of notes here is between D4 and A4. And if we look at our chart here, D4 and A4, that sits squarely in the flute's lowest register. It's the least powerful, and it doesn't have as bright of a tone. It's, it's the darkest register. When we, when we shift things up, I move things up um, a tritone here from F to B. Now the range is between G sharp 4 and D sharp 5. G sharp 4, D sharp 5 puts it a little bit higher in, in the range here. So we're starting to get into that that more middle range for this instrument. But let's check out some of the other instruments here. In the first example, in the oboe, we're between A3 and E4. It's actually A sharp three. It's right at the very bottom of the oboe's range. So this is where it's the weakest. So when we move things up, now the oboe is sitting E4 to A sharp four. E4, A sharp four, is right in the middle register, the lower middle register of the oboe. So it's going to sound nicer. It's going to sound brighter. So we're getting into the stronger registers of these instruments here. The same thing with the clarinet. The clarinet sounds fairly strong in all of the registers. We were in G3 to C sharp 4. G3, C sharp 4. That's right in the low register of the clarinet. And when we move things up, C4 to G4, C4 to G4. So we're more in the middle of the range of the clarinet. Now the bassoon, we were at D3 to F2, D3 to F2. So we're kind of straddling here between the lower and the middle registers. Then when we moved up, we're looking at B2 to G sharp three. B2, right on the edge of the middle range to G sharp three, it's gonna be right in the middle register.
is essentially the same. The only thing that I've done is I've moved some of the parts around. The method that I've used here, and it's not technically the best way, it's just a way to do it, is instead of having just the flutes carry the melody and have the oboes take the second harmony or the first harmony part, what I've done is I've moved those, so I've taken one of the flute lines and I've moved it down to the oboe. So now the melody is being done with the flute and the second oboe. And if we look at the range here, we're looking at about C4 to D sharp 5 in the oboe. So that's going to be kind of in the lower to middle range. And the combination of the timbres is helping to strengthen that line. So check out the melody here. As opposed to this. It's similar, but it has a different tone, it has a different color. Same thing with these harmonies here. So I've taken the first oboe line and I've put that up here with the second flute. Now that's pretty low for the flute. If we look at what notes we're working with here, E4 to A4. And so the flute, E4 to A4, that's not in its power range. But I don't think that's the hugest deal here because we're kind of mixing the colors up a little bit. Now, if we look at the clarinets and the bassoons, I did a similar thing here. So now this bassoon line, the second bassoon is sharing the same line with the first clarinet. And it's looking at between G4 and C4, which doesn't sound too bad, right? C4 and G4. It's kind of straddling the, the upper, middle, and higher registers there. And the clarinet is taking one of the bassoon lines, which is going to be lower. And so that's going to be between G3 and B2, right? Which is not really gonna work because that goes outside of the clarinet's range. So one thing that we could do is just transpose this up an octave. And now we have them separated by an octave. So let's just play the bottom four parts. And that works pretty well. So you can see we can kind of change around the coloring of the sound by splitting up the lines between different instruments there. It gives it a, a different kind of resonance as well. Now, when you put other instruments with the woodwinds, I've set up an example here in which I have the strings playing, I think it's exactly the same lines here. I think I actually need to back these down just a hair. So in this example, the strings are actually sitting right on the same exact notes, which doesn't sound as strong as moving the strings out of the way and letting the choir of woodwinds here occupy that space. So what I've done in this second example is I've moved the strings down an octave and listen to how that changes. It really lets the woodwinds come through, where before they're, they're kind of being obscured. It's, it's a much weaker sound, so neither one of these is necessarily right, but it just shows you how the woodwinds really can. I mean, you don't need to reinforce them with strings to occupy this middle ground here. Just moving the strings out of the way takes something that's pretty weak sounding. And we get something that's very nice and lush sounding. So 
So we'll check out some more examples and some more ways to use these woodwinds coming up in the next few examples here.